tears. They are what people shed when they are in pain, when they are sad, and especially when they mourn the loss of someone great. Tears seem to be somewhat uncontrollable, forcibly pushing out of the corners of the eyes. When the pain, emotional or physical, becomes too much to bear, and even though tears come as they please, the human race accepts them as the way they show their feelings. For most people, their eyes cry. It's different when you have Asperger's. For me, tears are an obnoxious leak in my skull. My tears seldom come when it's right. Sometimes they come when I'm very happy. Sometimes they come when I'm afraid. Sometimes they come when I'm in pain. But when I am sad or when I mourn the loss of someone great, tears are not a way for me to show my feelings. I cannot cry when the sadness is too great. I can cry weeks, months, usually years later, when the sadness has cooled down to a simmer in my heart. It's painful to hold the sadness in my heart, which is why I cannot wait for the tears. But I have the mystery of music inside me that sings when there is sadness in my heart. I play my violin, and the mystery works inside me and carries the sadness away. For most people, their eyes cry. But for me, my violin cries. I believe God brought her to me, Miss Stephanie Gray, the beautiful violinist who taught me how to let the mystery out through my violin. She taught me everything I craved to know and all that I thought I didn't need to know. She was selfless, compassionate, intelligent, interesting, and moreover the most loyal and beautiful soul I have ever known. No matter how jumbled up the words, she heard articulation. And when words failed to be spoken, she understood the silence. She's the only one in my life I didn't have to explain myself. When I played my violin, she knew it was my native language and the way I could speak clearly and without offense to others. I would play and I would rock from side to side. And everything inside me would be in peaceful unison. The crowd would laugh when I wanted them to laugh cry when I wanted them to cry. Stephanie taught me how to harness the mystery, and the mystery would ride on the sounds of my violin and speak to the audience intently. For the crowd, their eyes cried because my violin cried. The sadness came big to my heart in September of 2004, when Stephanie lost her battle with cancer. Four lost years would pass before I would mourn her. The mystery, like a bright and unwavering light, would not hide in the sadness any longer. I had to play again. It was Stephanie's dream that I would someday play the Preludium and Allegro, and so with a heavy heart I played, and I played, and I played. And with a burst of passion my violin cried, so did I. As I practiced, the tears would come from the corners of my eyes and run down my face. The tears stroked my violin and sank into the sound holes. When the time came and I performed for the crowd once again, the mystery rode on my tears into my violin and out to the ears of the crowd on the sounds that I played. My violin cried, and so did the crowd. The tears that came for Stephanie are now forever a part of my violin. The pores would drink my tears and revived the mystery. When I played the violin, others may hear me playing Bach or Mozart. But no matter what you may hear, I'm always playing Stephanie.